What's going on friends? Welcome back to The Honeystead. My name is Kaylee and if you're new here, I am a herbalist, beekeeper, modern day homesteader, homemaker. I don't really fit into a box, but I'm still gonna just say like I do a lot of <laughs> a little bit of everything here on our homestead. And recently I've had a lot of people ask me, what are some of my favorite medicinal flowers that I grow? And so I'm sitting here getting ready to start some of my seeds. It really like kind of dawned on me. I really probably should start talking about my favorites and y'all, <laughs> it is hard <laughs> to talk about like, what are your favorites? So they're all my favorite. Okay. Like that's <laughs> how I can, how I can kind of put it into, um, yeah, it's really hard. But what I can do is start saying like, okay, well, these are my favorite flowers. Uh, and then I think next we're gonna talk about like some of my favorite culinary herbs because y'all, I do like to do some cooking. And then just kind of go through that in that way. I feel like that's probably gonna be helpful. But I pulled out five and there's probably more, but we're gonna talk about five of them. So the first one absolutely is my favorite to grow here on our homestead is some chamomile. Now, chamomile is absolutely lovely. I use it in the majority of my teas. Um, you can use it so many different ways, uh, in a tea, in a tincture. Uh, I'm gonna play around and infuse chamomile in some honey and see what I think about that. But not only is it medicinal and beautiful, but our pollinators absolutely love it too. And that is one of my favorite things is to go over there and actually see, see our beautiful honeybees flying around the chamomile, gathering all of that pollen. But let's talk real quick about the herbal actions that chamomile has to offer. So chamomile is a nervine, which means it's gonna help work throughout your nervous system and relax. It's also an anti-inflammatory, which is why sometimes after a really good hard day here on the farm of working, I will absolutely take some of those chamomile flowers and brew up a beautiful tea to just kind of help settle all of my body's aches and pains. It's also a great mild sedative as well as an anti-spasmatic, but chamomile can be used in multiple different ways, in multiple different forms, in a salve, in a tea, in a tincture. Um, I have even used it externally on my eye if I get like a sty. Um, I will say, always do your research though when it comes to talking about specific plants and herbs that you might be allergic to because this is in the Asteraceae family. Um, so yes, chamomile, probably number one on my must have medicinal flowers here on our homestead. Then of course, after I said my must have medicinal flowers, I realized that there's one more. So we're gonna have six now. Uh, I don't know where they are in my seed packets. Honestly, a lot of them, yeah, I grow a lot of passion flower. But if you've been following my medicinal garden and my story, you probably have seen my beautiful passion flower fortress <laughs> that I have growing in, in our garden. But I have to say like 100% passion flower is probably one of my favorite medicinal plants as well as flowers that grow here in my garden. Now I have a few, Oh gosh, so many runners from that. So I'm constantly transplanting and then giving away passion flower babies. Uh, but starting from seed, I don't know if I have any more seeds. So yeah, but my bad. Uh, but my honeybees absolutely love the passion flower as well as other native bees and pollinators. Um, it is just so heavenly up in the up in the garden with the beautiful archway and I mean I kind of go under there and just sneak and uh, and kind of hide but passion flower is used as well uh, to help relax so I use the leaves as well as the flowers um, the leaves I mainly use in tea form and I take them and I dry them um, but with the flowers, I've taken the flowers and I've tinctured them, um, chopped up with the leaves. Very pretty, very beautiful. That is one of my favorite Nervine herbs. Great for relaxing um, and pairs very well with chamomile as well. One of my other top herbs that I use on a fairly regular basis is uh, feverfew. Now, feverfew is another 
uh, similar looking to chamomile. So if you're looking for aesthetic in your garden, it's, I mean, it's gonna have a, a pretty little flower, uh, just, just like chamomile. You can use the leaves and the flowers with feverfew um, and how i use it is in kind of a tincture form i also will use it in a tea form but it has a very aspirin like flavor so it's not always the best uh, in a tea but paired very well with chamomile or peppermint or something of that will help kind of cut that flavor um, but how I use Feverfew, uh, because the herbal actions that it have to offer is it's a it's an anti-inflammatory. It's also a vasodilator. Now this is my go-to for migraine prevention. And some of the things that I've found with my body is like when the barometer drops or if we're getting ready to get hit with a storm, um, I tend to get migraines shortly after that. So. What I found to help is to go ahead and use Feverfew as a preventative versus if I already have a headache, then I'm gonna go to something that's gonna help more with uh, as an analgesic for, for pain. Um, and that could be, which I have it in here too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this probably could have made that list as well. Um, some California poppy as a great analgesic. And I have got to look through, I know I have some seeds somewhere <laughs> in this. Um, so see how this goes. All right, like I'm trying to say five and then I've already said seven. So like, we're just gonna talk about favorite flowers <laughs> that offer medicinal properties. Uh, okay, so chamomile, passion flower, California poppy, um, which is great too, by the way. Um, the next one I would say is yarrow. I think yarrow would be a really good one to talk about. Yarrow is the warrior herb. Um, now, yarrow grows wild around here, and there's multiple different types of yarrow. You can see some that have the colors. They're beautiful for drying. Uh, pollinators love them as well, but the one specifically that we're talking about with the medicinal properties is the uh, Achillea millifolium. And I'm going to just go ahead and put all of the scientific name of the plants that we're talking about in the description of this video because I just realized that I didn't say feverfew or passion flowers or the chamomile. Um, as you will find in your medicinal journey, whether this is new for you or you are thinking that herbs might be something that you want to, to learn more about, it's always very important to go ahead and start studying the scientific name because like yarrow, uh, there are multiple different types of yarrow, which I thought I had some flowers here to show you. Um, but you always want to go with the one that has the medicinal property. So I'm gonna put that down in the description for you to fall back and reference uh, so that this video is not gonna end up being like a total wash. Um, so that is what I will, you know, end up, end up doing. Now, among the many herbal actions that Yarrow has to offer, the one that I can really love the most about this beautiful little plant is that it is a vulnerary herb. Um, a vulnerary is an herb that offers mending to the tissues. It basically means that if you use it on minor cuts, burns, wounds, um, it will help mend the tissues. So I make yarrow salve, which is great. Um, I call it like the working hand salve. And I absolutely, you know, I love yarrow for that, especially because come gardening season, I am pulling weeds and I don't wear gloves <laughs> the way I probably should. Um, so I'm constantly cutting and scraping, you know, scraping, hurting my hands. And uh, when I need to go ahead and mend my tissues, yarrow is my go-to uh, for that. Now, one of my next favorite medicinal herbs that I have growing in my garden is echinacea. Now, echinacea is absolutely stunning in my garden. What I love about echinacea is not only is it a medicinal herb, but it also is the most, from what I have heard, um, one of the most common decorative plants for people, for neighborhoods, for housing developments. 
um, neighborhoods, all of that, because of the beautiful cone flower that it has to offer, uh, you know, it, it obviously will draw your eye to it. But the other thing that I love, and this is where I want people to start connecting the fact that like, hey, these are not only decorative, but they are also, you know, stunning and medicinal. Um, if people would start to really look at what they have growing right outside their door, whether they're in a neighborhood or if they're on a piece of property where there's lots of weeds, maybe that will help them form a different relationship with plants. I know when I started learning about herbal medicine, uh, I truly learned, you know, how to look at plants completely different. The weeds that were in my garden, like, like broadleaf plantain or dandelion or purslane or, you know, all of that. Uh, I used to a long, long time ago start pulling them up uh, to plant things that I felt like needed to be in a row, but the weeds are just going to grow no matter where. I mean, the dandelion, it makes me smile every, se every time I see um, dandelion growing on concrete, you know, and, and the concrete cracks because that just shows how strong and resilient these plants truly are. But echinacea is one that I use when I am coming down with something and I need to boost my immune system. So I'll use it in a tea. I will use it in a tincture. I won't use it more than two weeks at a time. Uh, any longer than that, it's not exactly that good for you. But I know when I started feeling like something was coming on, I took echinacea in capsule form um, with some ashwagandha and then also honey all the time. <laughs> um, but I hit echinacea pretty hard with the, uh, the honey and the black cumin seed and the ashwagandha. And I swear, as soon as I did it, my immune system kicked whatever I was fighting out, um, battled it and did exactly what it, what it needed to do. But this is probably one of my favorites. Um, I know that I've talked about it in the past in one of my last videos and I have not actually shared with you. So I think this year we're actually going to go ahead and do it. I'm planning on growing a lot of echinacea. One, because our pollinators love it, but two, um, because it's beautiful. And three, I have some echinacea that has already been established for a couple of years now. And I'm gonna actually pull some of the root up to go ahead and put in my, as a tincture, um, in the event of, which this is something that, you know, I wanna have on hand. Uh, but echinacea root tincture, from what I have read, um, applied to, if you have a snake bite, it'll help pull out uh, the toxins. So that's a project. We'll talk about that on another day. Uh, I think I've had a few people ask me about what is in my first aid travel pack. Um, and I think I probably should go ahead and start sharing like this is my first aid kit, my herbal first aid kit, and it's coming. So that's a project I'm working on. We're getting off topic, <laughs> but echinacea, I can't say enough about it. And it's pretty much growing everywhere. Uh, then lavender is another one that I do very much like. I'm not a big fan in my tea. However, I have had lavender infused honey, which I think is beautiful. You'll get the same calming, relaxing effect. Uh, the other way that I like to use lavender obviously is in essential oil. Um, do a couple of drops in my bath bombs um, just for breathing in and relaxing. But I also like using lavender paired with um, paired with yarrow even, or plantain, um, in a salve form. So you'll probably see me doing a little bit more with lavender this year. Um, cause I do plan on starting a good, a good bit of it. I have goals, lots of them, <laughs> and there are many more medicinal flowers that I absolutely love growing. Um, if you guys are interested, in actually learning how to grow all of these and, and not just not just learning how to grow all of these but if you're interested in learning more about 
how to start your home apothecary. Um, Jill from Whispering Willow Farm and I decided to, this past October, we put together an entire apothecary course. Uh, it's all online, it's a lifetime access. You will get many, many PDFs. I can't how many, I can't tell you how many we actually counted, uh, but it, it's, oh, you'll get your own Materia Medica, how to make teas, tinctures, um, decoctions, salves, even capsules. Oh gosh, ox smells. I mean, it, it's a nice packed full uh, course. We offered that back in October. And just the other day, we launched our, our grower's guide. So all of these herbs that I pretty much talked about, except the passion flower, um, is in that grower's guide. And we decided to do a bundle with our home apothecary course and our beginner's guide to growing your medicinal garden. That's together. I'm gonna put the link down in the description. I'm also gonna pin it in the comment if you are interested. Like I said, this course is only going to be available for not much longer. So I'm gonna to get to planting some of these seeds and going through and seeing what else. One of the next videos that we're gonna do is talk about the culinary herbs. And then if you guys have any ideas or if you want more of you know, my top five in different categories, ask me. I'd love to put something together. Again, <laughs> it is so hard to just say, that I only have a few favorite because they all have something to offer. So as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.